Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Shamin Khan. Today I am going to discuss about some topics from general physiology. Now let us proceed to the topics that we are going to study today. Today we are going to study about transport ac system across the cell membrane. The transport system across the cell membrane may be defined as that is it is a biophysiochemical phenomenon by which different substances like molecules or ions are transported through the cell membrane from inside to outside or vice versa. The transport system may be classified as micromolecular membrane transport process and macromolecular membrane transport process. The micromolecular membrane transport process consists of active transport and passive transport. The active transport is again subdivided into primary active transport and secondary active transport which consists of co-transport and counter-transport and passive transport is divided into osmosis and diffusion. Diffusion is again divided into simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion. Now, macromolecular membrane transport is also divided into two parts that is endocytosis and exocytosis. Endocytosis is again divided into phagocytosis and pinocytosis. Now, let us discuss about passive transport. The passive transport may be defined as transport of substances along the concentration gradient or electrical gradient or both that is electrochemical gradient from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. It is also known as downhill movement. It does not require any energy. The molecule moves from high concentration to low concentration. It is like swimming in the direction of flow of water of flow in the liver. Now, as we know, the passive transport is divided into osmosis and diffusion. Diffusion is further divided into simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion. Now, what is diffusion? The random molecular movement of substance, molecule by molecule, either through intermolecular space or in the membrane or in combination with carrier protein from higher solute concentration to lower solute concentration is known as diffusion. No external energy is required in case of diffusion. This diffusion is again divided into simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion. As we see here, in case of simple diffusion, there is no need of carrier protein, but in case of facilitated diffusion, it occurs with the help of the carrier protein. Now, simple diffusion. The kinetic movement of molecules or ions occurs through a membrane opening or through intermolecular space without any interaction of the, with the carrier protein in the membrane is known as simple diffusion. What are the criteria of simple diffusion? That is, the movement from high to low concentration area, no need of additional energy, no need of carrier protein. And the simple diffusion occurs through the channel protein and lipid bilayer interstices, which is the most important. What are the examples of simple diffusion? That is, the diffusion of respiratory gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide across the respiratory membrane. Now, facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion means the movement of the molecules or ions through the membrane from higher solute concentration to lower solute concentration by binding with the carrier protein along electrochemical gradient. Here we must have to mention that in case of facilitated diffusion, there must have to be present with the carrier protein. Carrier, this carrier protein undergo repetitive conformational changes during the process, that is structural change. In facilitated diffusion, movement occurs along the concentration gradient, carrier protein is needed but no energy is needed. As we see here, this is the cell membrane. The transported molecule must have to be bind in the carrier protein that is present in the cell membrane. The bind transported molecule must have to bind with the binding site of the carrier protein. Then there is a conformational or a structural change occurs and the molecules moves outside to inside the cell. By, bind, uh, by binding with the carrier protein. Here also we see in case of simple diffusion, there is no need of carrier protein, but in case of facilitated diffusion, the diffusion must have to be, uh, uh, diffusion must have to be occur with the help of carrier protein. As we see here in case of simple diffusion, uh, in case of facilitated diffusion, 
simple diffusion no carrier protein is needed but in case of facilitated diffusion the molecule must have to be bind with the carrier protein that present with the in, within the cell membrane this is the example of simple diffusion that occurs directly and this is the example of facilitated diffusion figure of facilitated diffusion where uh, the protein must have to uh, molecule must have to bind with the carrier protein that then they enter within the cell the passive transport and facilitated diffusion passive transport and facilitated diffusion no need of, of atp that is energy is not needed now the main difference between the simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion in case of simple diffusion there is no need of carrier protein but in case of facilitated diffusion there is need of carrier protein number 2 the concentration of diffusing substance increases the rate of simple diffusion increases proportionately but in case of facilitated diffusion the rate of diffusion cannot rise greater than vmax level vmax mean velocity maximum as we see the picture this is the graph this is the concentration of a substance this is the rate of diffusion in case of simple diffusion increase the substance concentration increase the simple diffusion rate that is the simple diffusion but in case of facilitated diffusion the in in case the diff, uh, increase the substance concentration in, increase the facilitated diffusion up to the vmax that is vmax is a limiting point further uh, facilitated diffusion no more occur okay now the factors affecting the rate of diffusion there are several factors that greatly affect the diffusion through a cell membrane number 1 is permeability of the cell membrane the rate of diffusion is directly proportional to the permeability of the cell membrane the temperature the rate of diffusion is directly proportional to the body temperature now concentration gradient or electrical gradient of the substance across the cell membrane the rate of diffusion is directly proportional to the concentration or electrical gradient of diffusing substance across the cell membrane solubility of the cell membrane the diffusion rate is directly proportional to the solubility of the cell membrane particularly lipid soluble substance can easily pass through the cell membrane now thickness of the cell membrane the rate of diffusion is inversely proportional to the thickness of the cell membrane and size and weight of the cell membrane is also inversely proportional to the rate of diffusion now let us come to the topics about osmosis osmosis mean diffusion of solvent molecules solvent means water now what is osmosis definition the movement of the solvent molecules that is water molecules across a semi permeable membrane from an area of low solute concentration to an area of high solute concentration is called osmosis the exit amount of pressure required to stop osmosis is known as osmosis.